In this new study, researchers evaluated the impact of 12 weeks of regular lentil consumption on metabolic health. And the results were very exciting. Make sure to stay tuned till the end of the video to hear an important piece of information from Dr. Michael Greger. Now, the USDA recommend that adults should consume around 300 grams of cooked pulses weekly. However, very few studies to date have looked at the long-term impact of lentil consumption at this dose, nor have they really evaluated the gastrointestinal symptoms that may arise in response to this level of pulse consumption, which is why this study was quite significant. It was a randomized clinical trial that assessed dynamic, lipidemic, glycemic and inflammation responses during a 12-week dietary intervention of seven midday meals, totaling 980 grams or zero grams of cooked green lentils every week on the health of participants, who ranged from 18 to 70 years old, who were at great risk of developing chronic metabolic disorders. Surveys were administered once a week to assess how lentil consumption impacted GI symptoms and satiety throughout the 12-week intervention. During this 12-week period, were asked to complete a high-fat meal challenge, wherein they consumed a 50-gram oral fat load. Blood samples were collected after fasting and hourly for five hours after meals for blood marker assessment. And here's what they found. For those consuming the lentils, their daily average legume consumption significantly increased from baseline at 0.1 to 0.6 cups, which increased their healthy eating index scores. The mean response rates to the satiety and GI surveys were 89.6 and 90.8% for the control group, respectively, and 89% and 89.4% for the lentil group, respectively. While satiety measures did not vary by meal groups, GI symptom severity responses for both groups were rated as non or mild among 87.7%, with only 10% rating them as moderate and 2.3% rating them as severe throughout the 12-week intervention. 12 weeks of daily lentil consumption decreased fasting measures of lipid metabolism, including total and LDL cholesterol levels. The long-term lentil consumption also improved postprandial glucose and inflammation responses to the high-fat meal challenge. One of the mechanisms by which lentils are thought to reduce serum cholesterol is through saponins, which are bioactive compounds that regulate lipid metabolism and prevent cholesterol absorption. What's significant is that these metabolic improvements were independent of changes in something called anthropometric measures. That's things like weight, BMI, waist circumference, etc., which suggests a direct impact of lentil consumption on metabolism. And thus, increased lentil consumption could be a safe and effective dietary strategy to improve metabolic health. Quote, in conclusion, our findings provide evidence that long-term lentil consumption in individuals with increased risk for metabolic disease, as defined by elevated waist circumference and postprandial triglyceride responses, can mitigate increase in fasting cholesterol levels as well as postprandial glucose and inflammatory responses. Our findings help address the current limited body of research of legume consumption on gastrointestinal symptomology. With the important finding that lentil consumption over the USDA recommended dose is not associated with increased GI distress. These results implicate daily consumption of lentils as a safe and effective dietary strategy to improve metabolic health. This information further informs the development of pulse-based dietary strategies to lower disease risk and to slow or reverse metabolic disease progression in at-risk populations. Now, the research was funded by the USDA ARS Pulse Crop Health Initiative. However, the authors declared no conflicts of interest. The funders had no role in the design of this study, in the collection analyses or interpretation of data, in the writing of the manuscript or in the decision to publish the results. Just to end the video, let's hear from Dr. Michael Greger of nutritionfacts.org to see what he thinks about industry-funded studies. So in fact, that's the first thing I do when I look at a study is who funded it? Because um, you're concerned about the so-called funding bias or sponsorship bias. Now, that doesn't mean the study is necessarily bad, but it's certainly you take it with a grain of salt and you want to make sure that the study was not designed to have a kind of predetermined outcome as so often happens in the scientific literature. The nutrition literature is a mess. You know, just because I, you know, maybe laying out the best available balance of evidence on a topic doesn't necessarily mean that evidence is particularly good. But it's the best we got. You got to eat something. So you kind of work with the best data you have. But, you know, the global health and wellness industry is valued at like four trillion dollars is something crazy. So no wonder there's so many baseless claims, so much pseudoscience. And so you say, OK, well, that's why we got to stick to the real science, right? The peer reviewed scientific literature. But 
as you've been hearing, the peer-reviewed literature is broken. Says who? Says the longtime editors of the most prestigious medical journals on the planet, The Lancet, the New England Journal, right? Errors, fraud, falsification, fabrication, image manipulation, selective outcome reporting, publication bias, predatory publishing, p-hacking, harking, ghostwriting, right? The conflicts of interest among researchers, among editors, among entire journals. I mean, the list goes on and on. And as bad of a mess, medical misinformation is, the nutrition literature is even worse. But, you know, at least the peer-reviewed literature offers some bar to entry, unlike, you know, people just spouting nonsense online. You know, it all comes down to paraphrasing that uh, Winston Churchill quote about democracy. Peer-reviewed medical literature, worst form of evidence, except for all the others. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe for more upcoming videos.